Today, we wire up the lights to the Spark Core and Arduino, and we cover the programming involved that let them control my lights. I'm Ryan, aka I Make Stuff, and this is part three of my Minecraft controlled Christmas tree tutorial. Today, we finish off the control path for the lights. I'll quickly run through how I used Node Red in Bluemix, and we'll look at the code used inside the Spark Core and Arduino Uno, as well as how everything was wired together. If you haven't watched part one or two, check them out first to get up to speed. Now, let's take a quick look at how Node Red in Bluemix fits into this project. Running Node Red in Bluemix was very handy while developing. You could connect ScriptCraft straight to the Spark Core functions and leave Bluemix out of the mix, but I was figuring things out for the first time with this project, so I found it extremely helpful. Since this is an optional part of the project, I'm just going to do a crash course on some basics and link to more in-depth resources below. Node Red gives you a great visual layout for wiring nodes. To demonstrate, we can grab an inject node, a function node, and a debug node, enter a message into the payload of the function node, and wire the three together. Now, when I activate this node by clicking the button, the function node will execute and pass its contents to the debug node, which will log a message in the debug window. And that's how Node Red works. Nodes and wires. We connect ScriptCraft to Bluemix using HTTP input nodes. Here, we see a node for light on as well as light off. This is where the HTTP requests from ScriptCraft are headed when we activate the lever in Minecraft. Attached to each HTTP node is a function node that adds the correct payload. One for light on, zero for light off. Then I have another function node add in the proper HTTP headers and URL information. And finally, this HTTP request node sends out a new HTTP request to the Spark Core. The Spark Core will work its magic and send back a response which is forwarded back to ScriptCraft and ultimately logged in the Minecraft server console. If we look at the update RGB node flow, we see things are almost identical. In this case, there is only one incoming HTTP node. This is because the command information is stored as a parameter in the HTTP request, as we discussed in part two. So, we just need to make sure that we grab the parameter from the incoming request and include it in the payload that will be sent to the Spark core. So we have our commands coming out of the internet and into the Spark core. This brings us into the real world and the physical side of this project. So now let's take a look at how things are wired up. This is what things look like while wired up and controlling the tree. It looks more complicated than it actually is. So let's take it apart and wire it up from scratch. This is a Spark core. Spark being the company, Core being the product name. It is an Arduino compatible, Wi-Fi enabled, cloud connected microcontroller. And it's the brains of this operation. The Core controls the bulb lights with this easy to use relay called the Power Switch Tail 2. Just plug one end into an outlet and the other into the lights. Then we connect the Spark Core using two wires. One wire connects to ground on the Spark Core and this terminal on the power switch tail. Then we connect a signal wire between digital pin 7 on the core and this terminal on the power switch tail. Now, when the D7 pin goes high, the tail activates the circuit and the lights turn on. When it goes low, the tail deactivates and the lights turn off. Next up, we'll connect the RGB LED strip. Things are a little more complicated for this one. The problem was I couldn't connect the strip directly because it needs more power than a microcontroller can provide. So I had to use these RGB amplifiers. They're still pretty straightforward. The LED strip connects to the output side just like this. And I connected the power wires to the power supply using this barrel jack adapter. Now the problem I ran into was that the Spark Core could only provide 3.3 volts and that wasn't enough to control the RGB amp. I found that the RGB amp needs five volts in order to function properly. Luckily, I had a five volt Arduino Uno laying around. So I had to wire the RGB amps into the Uno and the Uno into the Spark core. 
5 volts comes from the Arduino to the pin marked with the arrow on the input side of the RGB amp. The green signal came from pin D5 and plugs into the green pin on the RGB amp. I used D9 for the red signal control, again plugging into the red pin on the amp. And D6 controls the blue channel. Also, we need to connect a common ground, so I add a jumper wire to the negative terminal on the barrel jack connector and plug the other end into a ground header on the Arduino. Next, I connected the Uno to the core using a serial connection, and since data only had to flow in one direction, I only had to use two wires. One connecting the ground on the core to the ground on the Arduino, and one connecting the TX pin on the core to the RX pin on the Arduino. And that's everything. The bulb lights turn on when the core's D7 pin goes high and activates the power switch tail. The Arduino listens to the core's serial port for commands. And the RGB amplifier is connected to the Arduino's 5 volt, ground, and 3 digital PWM pins. Side note, I had trouble with the red channel burning out on the RGB amplifiers. So ultimately I had to use a separate RGB amp just for the red channel. I think this was just a manufacturing defect, so hopefully none of you have any problems. Okay, we have everything wired up and commands are being sent to the Spark Core. We're almost at the finish line. Now let's look at the Arduino and Spark Core code that processes the HTTP commands and takes them from the virtual world to the real one. I've created and exposed two functions on the Spark Core. One handles the bulb lights turning on and off, that's update bulb. The other handles the LED strip changing color, that's update RGB. First, we begin the serial one connection that will let us talk to the Arduino. Then we set up the pin that will control the power switch tail. We set the pin mode for D7 to output and write it low. Then we register the spark functions. And these two lines take control of the onboard RGB LED, then shut it off. There's no code needed in the main loop. The spark will just sit and wait for one of the two exposed functions to be called. When the update bulb function is activated, we pull a single digit from the incoming command from Bluemix. Remember, this is attached in the parameters as a 1 or 0 here. Then, we convert the string to an integer number and check if it's a 1 or a 0. If it's 1, we write the D7 pin high, which will activate the power switch tail and turn on our lights. Then we return a 1. This will ping back through Bluemix and into Scriptcraft, where it's logged to our Minecraft server console. If it's a 0, we write D7 low, which deactivates the circuit and turns off our lights. Then we return a 2, which will again ping back and get logged to the server console. If somehow neither of these conditions are true, something is wrong and we return a zero. So if I read the log and see one or two coming back, it means the lights are working. If I see zero or anything else, something's wrong. When update RGB is activated, we again pull a single digit from the incoming command and convert it to an integer. If you remember from the last video, we are using a single digit number command to indicate exactly what we want the LED strip to do. Two, four, or six raises the red, green, or blue channel. And one, three, or five lowers the red, green, or blue channel. So here we have a series of if statements to check which command we've received. Then we print that character out to the Arduino via the serial one connection. And we return a response variable that again pings back and winds up logged to our server console. And that's it. Now, I'm sure there are more efficient ways to code this, but I wrote the code so it was easy to test and debug, and then once it was working, I just left it as is. The final stage in the control path is the Arduino code. The Arduino controls the LED strip via three pins. Pin 9 controls red, pin 5 controls green, and pin 6 controls blue. These pins will output an 8-bit PWM signal ranging from 255 to 0, which correlates from 0% to 100% brightness for each color channel. Keep in mind that 255 equals off, and 0 
equals full power. There's more info about Arduino and RGB control in the resources below. The Arduino is set up to wait for serial data coming from the Spark core. When serial data comes in, the Arduino reads the command, then adjusts the appropriate color channel, either up or down. Then before writing the new value to the pins, we constrain them so they stay within a certain range. Then we just write the value out to the pins and watch the lights change color. Now that we've covered every stage, let's try to visualize it all coming together by following a command through the entire control path. We start things off by switching the lever in Minecraft. This activates the command block, which runs the bulb control HTTP function with the light on command. That causes the function to send the light on HTTP request to our Bluemix URL. The request activates the light on HTTP node, which then adds params equals one to the payload then sends it in a new request to the spark core update bulb function. The spark core function checks the command value, finds it's a one, and then writes the D7 pin high, which activates the power switch tail, and on go the lights. That's it. That's the whole control path start to finish. Hopefully you're still here, and hopefully you're not too confused. There are time-coded links below so you can click back to rewatch any specific sections. I've tried to cover everything thoroughly without being too long-winded, but I'm sure I've left some of you with questions along the way. So be sure to check out all the resources in the description. This material is what I used to put this project together. So hopefully you can find answers to any problems you might run into. Next week, I'll show you how I set up my Raspberry Pi to run the tree cam that let people watch my tree 24 seven in real time. I'll also cover a couple extra tips and tricks along the way, like receiving push notifications every time someone new logged into the server. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to get in touch, drop a comment below or follow me on Twitter at I underscore makes underscore stuff. I'll try to answer all your questions or at the very least get you pointed in the right direction. That's it for now, folks. My name is Ryan and I make stuff.